Everybody's got an opinion. Every Californian and Virginian. It's so hard to tell who to trust and who to ignore. Someone's got to settle the score. Trey and Chelsea will help you choose. Who's views win? Which ones lose? Hi. Hi. I just wanted you to say hi first because I feel like I always say hi first. <laughs> Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome to Review That Review, the podcast dedicated to reviewing. Reviews were just like Siskel and Ebert, only instead of reviewing cinematic masterpieces, we rate and review those hilarious, scathing, and sometimes suspicious online reviews. Oh, and that's Chelsea Dawn. And that's Trey Gerald. And when we come together, we form the Review Queens. Uh, how's your crown today, Trey? How's your crown today, Trey? Uh, my crown is great today. I um, It's feeling very pointy and spiky. Uh, it's Monday. And a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, we're f- recording episode five right now, woo, woo, woo. but we are launching the podcast on Wednesday. So we have less than 48 hours before it's launched True. into the world. So it's a very exciting time and busy time. Um, but yeah, I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy. To- I'm doing great. I just came from oh, a weekend in Ojai. And I am just, you know, more spiritual and relaxed than ever. So mm. I feel good. Wait, so what's Ojai? Explain it to me. I don't really know. Oh, Ojai is a part of town outside of LA. It's like not very far. It's about an hour and a half or so away. And it's just a very spiritual location. You go there and you just want to be a better person and take in nature and look at the beautiful vistas and go to Meditation Mount, which is a huge mountain where you get to see just the sky and nature. And I don't know, it just makes all the trivial things that we deal with every day in life that get us down. It just makes it seem insignificant when compared to the beautiful, vast nature of Ojai. So I highly recommend it. it sounds beautiful. Was there um, any specific reason that you were on a trip over the weekend? There might be a reason. It was my birthday, or it is my birthday tomorrow in real time. So I was going for my birthday. Oh my gosh. So when you're hearing this, listeners, uh, her birthday was two weeks ago. No, when you're, oh yes, I guess when you're hearing this, it's true. My birthday is June 22nd, which happens to be the same birthday as Meryl Streep, which may or may not come up later in this episode. Well, my, I share a birthday March 14th with um, an Instagram account of a dog that is following <laughs> us. I saw that today, um, but also Albert Einstein and Taylor Hanson. Oh, I love that for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is very positive and that's wonderful. But do you have any um, complaints you want to lodge? Always. I think Logic that it's time complaint. that we, I Logic think complaint. that it's. Logic <laughs> complaint. <laughs> Lodge a complaint. <laughs> Let's lodge a complaint. Um, I'll lodge a complaint. Sure. It always feels so good when we do it. Um, I'm going to lodge a complaint today against bad to go t- containers. Just bad to go containers. Wow. I think that this is um, something that a lot of restaurant owners maybe don't pay enough attention to. And also, I'm wondering why certain things haven't changed. For me, obviously the styrofoam, that's pretty offensive. You know, like you're just one small tear away from just the entire chicken Caesar salad sitting all over your passenger seat. I don't know why that's still a thing, but for me, the worst offense is, you know, those like foil ones that I'm sure they're like, so you can reheat your food. Like how nice, right? Like I have a little device, but I also have to like unfold like mm-hmm. all the way around and then if I want to like do it again then I have to like refold all the way down and if you get like the fold even the littlest bit off then it's like got to start all over again and it's maddening and I just wish 
I just wish someone would come out with a better to go to container that could go in the oven if need be. That's also not styrofoam and not terrible for the environment. And I think we've been sleeping at the wheel with the to, with the to go containers. So whoever is out there and feels so inspired to be the inventor of the to go container that every single restaurant is guaranteed to have on on hand that we're all going to love please please do it cuz it's necessary i hear you so hard on that and my favorite ones are the paper ones where they like fold in and you have the little tab like a cereal box except Ugh. when you accidentally tear that there's no way to close it but That's i hear it. your i hear your point about you can't put it in the oven and it would catch fire right See, so it's like, we need more versatility. That's one of those tricky things about those um, like Chinese takeout things with the metal handles mm. and you put it in the microwave and it stops, starts popping and you're like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I should have died. Like, Generally speaking, metal in the microwave is not a good thing. Never. <laughs> yeah, so more, more versatility and the to-go containers would be lovely. How about you? Do you have a complaint you wanna lodge? I do. I definitely, I have a very timely complaint that I'm lodging. Lodge a complaint. I don't know um, if you can see behind me, Chelsea. Um, I, you'll see this on the YouTube, I suppose, but I hung this 240 LED light curtain. For the listener, you know, it's the, they're like really stupid and cheap. It's like very Instagram-y. It's like a college dorm attire. You know, they're just like little string Christmas, lights. Like Christmas lights. Yeah, they're like tinier micro Christmas lights, basically. Um, I put them on this accent wall because I thought, oh, this will be so cute when I'm recording the podcast. It'll be some bright color behind me. But this wall is full of picture frames with like motivational things because I need that. So <laughs> in order for the length to be correct, I had to string it underneath some of the major, um, here I can just show you, some of the major posters. Oh, that's major. Um, so I spent time doing this. I have six of those little like, uh, you know, what do you call those? Those little like tape Strings? things. Well, the little like things where you pull the tape and it doesn't scratch off the wall. Oh, anyway, command it, strips. Yeah, command. That's right. So, okay. I have six of those. I did it. I had to reconfigure all the frames and then I put the batteries in the thing. Doesn't work. 240 of these lights. This is from the company Brookstone, which we all love to go into a Brookstone in the mall. Uh, um, but I guess Brookstone, I'm complaining, don't go into this frontier of light bulbs. I think you need to stick with your massage chairs, your mm. like amazing flight apparatus for comfort, but yes. leave the leave this to someone else. I'm devastated. And uh, my my day has been ruined. Wow. So I'm lodging a complaint against Brookstone and companies that stretch outside of their target demo. Wow. I feel I'm my, my apologies. That sounds like really frustrating and I'm sorry you had to deal with that. I will say that I think in the future, if ever something like this will happen, you're likely going to check the light first. It was, before. Definitely, <laughs> it was definitely a learning experience. It's a learning experience. But it's really even more complicated than I'm even explaining because it's um, each little hanging section is in its own little bread twisty tie because they get oh. like totally like um, fumbled up against each other. So the only way to hang it was to like hang it appropriately and then undo it. And then you have to stretch it because then they like they like uh, pop out and then they get into the strings that are hanging. It's a whole thing. Wow. Um, it, I wonder fun. if. Like, wasn't the, isn't there a thing with Christmas lights where like, if one of the kinks in the chain is broken, then the whole thing is just like, not gonna work. Yes, and to Brookstone's credit, there is like a hanging extra light bulb, but none of them are crunched or broken. So I have no hmm. idea which one, and there's 240. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go through individual, it's like not worth it. It was like $12. <laughs> yeah, right, no way. <laughs> anyway, so that's All my right. complaint. I mean, complaint heard and uh, my apologies. That sounds very, very frustrating. But I think we've heard enough of us complaining and I think it's time for us to hear some other people complaining. What do you think? I love the idea. <laughs> 
So glad that we agree. As you guys know, we are your trusty review queens. We each bring in a review from the internet that we feel needs to be inspected. We will read that review, we will break it down, and then we will rate the impact of the review on a scale from one to five crowns. It's a very regal process that we call Assess That Kvetch. But Chelsea, for all of the listeners who don't know the dying language of Yiddish, Ugh. what does that word mean? First of all, let's keep Yiddish alive, okay? It's a wonderful language that it I only, love. It only lives through the generation. It only lives. And there's just some things, it just sounds better in Yiddish, like oh, vetch, which is a way better way of saying complain because, like, it just sounds better, you know? Like, oi, stop kvetching so much. Gesundheit. Thank, thank, I didn't sneeze. I know. My um, <laughs> father-in-law always says, gazai gazant. <laughs> Yiddish. Yiddish. All right. Who's first today? You will be first. Last <gasps> week we did the one and the five, and uh, the week before that I went first. So you will be first today. Oh my goodness. Okay. So with that, take it away, you review queen. Oh, thank you, Trey. Review that review. All right, I have a review today from Ashley B. And Ashley B is reviewing on Amazon a, what I believe to be like a fake squatty potty, like, you know, not the trademarked squatty potty, but a, a variety of, of the squatty potty. Um, this is Ashley B's review. What is, a, one... what is a squatty potty? I'm curious oh. for your explanation. <laughs> For those of you listening who don't watch Shark Tank regularly um, or indulge in, in, you know, bathroom accoutrement, if you will, uh, the Squatty Potty is a like a step stool that tucks into the toilet. And if you're having problems going to the bathroom, as some of us are prone to have, no judgment, um, you can just let this this little step stool out in front of your feet and you can get your body into a proper squat, just like the cavemen. And your experience will be much easier and uh, less strained. So it really took off on Shark Tank um, and it's doing phenomenally well. And I hear that generally speaking, people are very pleased, but maybe it's a bit pricey. And I think this was a bit of a cheaper option but sometimes as they say you get what you pay for so let's see what ashley b has to say about this faux squatty potty okay she said change the product since summer now it's crap that's the the title very witty ashley b okay if i had been leaving this review in june of this year I would have easily given it five stars. In fact, we loved it so much. My husband and I ordered a new one as soon as we could for our downstairs bathroom. Unfortunately, due to finances, we didn't get the second one until today. I was excited and put it together immediately, but I could already tell it was different. The screws don't sit flush on the new one. So putting the caps over them make make it look silly they also put a new logo on it that looks way less sleek and way more infomercial-esque they're still advertising in the pictures the pretty sleek version from before i would not have ordered this version if i would have known how bad it looks super disappointed i added pictures to show the differences between the two Wow. wow. Ashley B is is not happy with this crappy product. Ashley B is really pissed that her squatty faux potty is not flush. Ashley B wants <laughs> to take this product down into the sewers and the gutters where it oh. belongs. Just flush that product right down the proverbial drain, Ashley B. She's so mad. She needs, she's going to have a diaper rash. I don't know. I don't know. Don't get an hemorrhoid. I, I don't know. What else? Do we 
Oh, your fault. Oh, your fault. All right. Ashley B. Ashley B has photographic evidence. Let's just say that first and foremost. I know that, you know, obviously you guys can't see what I see. Um, but basically what I'm seeing in this photo is that the the screw is not flush. It's just it's it's not in the proper spot. So what we have is a little bit of a, a raising of a lip on top and, and we just we don't have a solid place to put our feet now it doesn't really look like something that would impede my experience of this item if anything i'd say like eh, a little bit of an eyesore i'd rather things be flush as well but um i don't know like it seems like it would still serve a purpose to me do you think that that is ashley b's fault with which the construction of them screwing it together or do you think it's actually the manufacturer like it's not lining up um because the ikea you know you make it yourself but sometimes you, some people make it better than other people i think if there's a there's a high possibility that you know whoever was making the the area for the screw to go in in the factory did in fact you know maybe they sneezed or something before they you know <laughs> executed the whole i think it, it happens right where where things aren't lined up correctly so i don't know that it's it's necessarily ash ashley b's construction that that sent it off especially considering this was the first the second go round rather like we've done this before good point you know i you know the the bulk of this review is so reminiscent of yeah. your uh complaint that you lodged a couple of weeks ago about the false advertising and the packaging which True. happened to you with the Rite Aid thing yeah. um that is very maddening like if if the um product gets tweaked but there's not enough marketing budget to to reshoot the new images yeah. um then I do believe that's false advertising and I would be mad about that too. Yeah, I think I would be pretty mad. I mean, I, I think, you know, we all buy, buy a lot of products on Amazon, I guess. And sometimes you find a winner and when you find a winner, you know, and you want to order another one or you want to get a gift for a friend. Cause you're like, this is a real winner. I'm going to order a second one. I think it, it would be upsetting if it, if the consistency wasn't there. So Agreed. I when was this a review, day. by the way? This is recent. Um, a lot of people did invest in Squatty Potties over the pandemic because we were spending a lot more time at home. So this was written in October 14th of 2020. Because see, that was going to be my question. If it's recent, I wonder if there was an issue with manufacturing because of the global pandemic that was occurring. Could be. Yeah. And if, and maybe a lot of people really were ordering this product more than usual. And so they really had to churn them out, so to speak. Yeah. Oh it could, gosh. could be <laughs> Could I mean, we're not going to stop with the bathroom puns, right? You know, I, I, I do come across reviews like this often specifically on Amazon where something happens as production content continues. So I really think that this is a very valuable rev review because Ashley B, this is a returning customer yeah. and is pointing out that it is not consistent, the product you're receiving. Because my like, my like back and forth of that is sort of like, well, if you don't want to spend the money or if you don't have the financial means, which Ashley communicated, then like, you have to get a product that you have to assemble because the actual squatty potty is not a, is not requiring no assembly. assembly required. So I actually think this is really valuable that Ashley has put this information in front of my face before I click add to cart. I agree. I also really like agree and that I, I like that she disclosed to us that due to finances, you know, she couldn't get a second one until today. I feel like that really emphasizes her excitement, which she said she was so excited to get this second product. It was like, I was saving up for it. I loved the first one. Like I imagine her and her bathroom, her, her and her husband, like using the same bathroom and then just like waiting for the moment that they're going to have both bathrooms with this, with this squatty body in it. 
I thought of that too, because she or Ashley B says that they assembled it as soon as they could, which went back to my original point about was it whose fault was it that it didn't line up? But mm. there is something that makes me feel like Ashley B is being very truthful and the fact that they disclose, you know, we wanted to get it as soon as possible, but we couldn't because of finances. Like, I, I feel like Ashley's being very transparent. They're not trying to be bougie. They're not trying to like lie upwards. They're saying, this is my circumstance and this is like what I got. And that's incorrect and bad. So therefore, if I had written this in June, it would have been great this is what's happening now and you should know buyer beware. So I, I appreciate the, that. And I really receive it as truthful. I agree. I also wanted to point out the whole logo thing. Like I'm a big stickler for that. If your logo is going to be on my product, it better be like small and sleek and just blend in with the design in a way that's not offensive. I wouldn't want any product in my home that had, as Ashley B points out, an infomercial-esque logo on it. Like, I'm not a salesman for you. I'm just trying to use your product. And so I would much rather if somebody came to my house and used this product and it had a cute little logo, like it sounds like the first one did. And they were like, oh, where'd you get that? You know, let me disclose that information to just put a huge logo on it when it's uh, essentially a furniture item in your home that's going to live in your bathroom, I think that's also something I wouldn't want either. I I do think that I thought there would be more humor in the review based on the subject of, of this is crap. Um, yes. So I did feel a little let down in the humor entertainment area, although I, I was intrigued and I wasn't bored. Agree. I, I had high hopes for the bathroom puns from the title. I don't think we got as many as, as them, but I, I really think of them as I thought we were gonna get. But I did think that, you know, Ashley wanted to get down to brass tacks and just let us know. And like we, you and I did it, but it like, it's sort of like stupid and like obvious to just like write a bunch of bathroom puns, you know? Right. Like I, it kind of makes me appreciate the review more that they're just not going for the low hanging fruit. I agree. But like, I think that in just being truthful to what it takes to be a true queen, we do have to point out, like, I wasn't cackling. No, you no, know? I wouldn't like necessarily be like, oh, guys, let me read you this review around the campfire so that like we can have a good chuckle. I'm really um, finding myself on Ashley B's side here. Tell me, does it look like Ashley B hit spell check before they submitted? Ashley B definitely hit spell check. She's, in my guess, at least college educated. She used quotes properly, um, punctuation, all great, commas, periods, just appropriate to, you know, difference between the two, T W O. So I, I do think Ashley clicked spell check, maybe even has Grammarly Ooh. installed. All right. So what do you think the, is there an impact here for you? It's a deal breaker. I think it's kind of a, I think it's kind of a deal breaker for me. I think it's sort of a deal breaker. I wouldn't want a subpar product and I would trust somebody that's ordered it twice to be able to say that things aren't the same. I think at very least I might do a little bit more research, maybe reach out to the seller and say, I've heard this product is good. I, I, I probably wouldn't do that. That's not true. I would just click on to the next one. Let's be honest. That's what I would do too. Yeah. All right. I think I'm ready to crown this. Me too. Let's All do right. it. So in order to uh, be fair and not influenced by one another, Chelsea and I each have our own set of one to five crown cards. So we will simultaneously reveal our rating. The queens are tabulating. All right. Are you ready to show? Okay. I am ready. I have a feeling. I have a feeling how this is going to go. Okay. Well, let's see. Total score four four. That's what I thought. <gasps> Unanimous. Ah, we did unanimous four crowns. Trey, why did you give Ashley B four crowns? Honestly, because I humor wise is a little low, but they started with a joke in the title, so for that, love it. To the point, they were self. Um, 
humbling rather than self-aggrandizing, which I appreciated. Got straight to the point. It, you know, I don't have to maybe don't have to click see more. It's just to the point. There's images, there's evidence of the product, previous buyer. Therefore, I think I would probably not purchase this. I would scroll to see like other competitors and I would definitely be looking through other reviews to see if other people have had this experience. So that's why I gave Ashley B four crowns for this fake squatty potty. Yeah, I'm with you. Ditto to everything that you just said. And also, I just I believe that Ashley was a real person that had this experience. And I that's important to me when I'm reading a review that I feel like there's a real human being on the other side of this, not some like angry person on the internet or like someone that's that's a bot or someone that's, you know, whatever, insider baseball. This sounded like this was a real person. So Ashley B, good job. Four crowns. Woo. Wow. All okay. right. That was fun. Let's take a quick little break. And then when we come back, we can play with Meryl before we jump into my review of the week. Woo. Be right back. BRBZ. Hold your crown. We'll be right back. Oh, wow. Hey, queens. Look, we know that it can get super annoying to constantly be asked to rate and rap down, right and rap down. Look, aside from the fact that our podcast is literally all about reviews, the reason we are asking is because it's important for us to know what you, the listener, are thinking of the show so far. What do you love? What do you want less of? When you rate and review us, we get to hear what is resonating with you, and then you get a say. Now, as you know, Review That Review is an independent podcast, which means we gather all of our metrics based on what our community is telling us. We have made it easier to rate and review us with a super cute hyperlink, Hanny. Lovethepodcast.com slash the review queens. It's also just one little click away in the show description below. We honestly really do appreciate it. Now back! To the show. Now a warning. <laughs> All right, we're back from the break, and here we are. It's time to take a quick spin on the Merrill Go Round. Chelsea, strap into that whale. I don't feel like an icon. Most of the days I feel like I can't. That's with an A. I like how on this merrow go around there's whales. Yeah, I thought that might be like a possibility. Like you said on that's fin, maybe. I totally got what you were saying, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Strap into your alligator. This Merrill, this merrow go around has all kinds of crazy animals. Wait, I have a really funny dad joke. Tell me. How do you tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? How? Ask and find out which one we'll see you later and which one we'll see you after a while. Oh, wow. Wow. Maybe I'll use that one on my nephew. I think he'll like it. He's five. Yeah, I think it'll be a hit. <laughs> okay, anyway, so um, here's the deal. Chelsea and I will each pick a rotten, scathing, pithy one-star zinger. And with 30 seconds on the clock, we each take turns trying to recite that singer. What? I'm going to say that again. I was like, what? I said singer instead of zinger. I know. I, th I thought you were doing it on purpose. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Chelsea and I will each pick. Nope. All right. Here's the deal. Chelsea and I have each picked a rotten, scathing, pithy one-star zinger and with 30 seconds on the clock we each take turns trying to recite that singer why can't i say that i say Tr this usually all the time but i'm glad you're saying it because we should change it up recite zinger i think is hard okay yeah okay here's the deal chelsea and i will okay here's <laughs> the deal wow maybe you should say it. i'm gonna say it okay here's the deal Chelsea and I each pick a rotten, scathing, pithy one star zinger. And with 30 seconds on the clock, we take turns trying to recite the zinger in as many possible genres. 
just like Queen Meryl, who does everything. Before the clock runs out. Okay. Okay. I did the first review today. So Trey, you're going to go first with your zinger. What do you have for us today? Okay. This is going to be fun for me. Okay. So I have a Apple podcast review. Great. For a podcast called Good Night World featuring the beloved Sesame Street character, Elmo. Oh. But this is a one-star review. (laughs) And it says, I want to hear Elmo moan. (laughs) I am like already nervous. Can I be like completely transparent? Like what what the F? Also just like in the amount of genres you're going to have to do this in, I can't wait. It's going to be great. All right, here we go. Okay. (laughs) All right, are you ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one, go! Lifetime. I want to hear Elmo moan. (laughs) Televangelist. I want to hear Elmo moan. Musical theater. I want to hear Elmo moan. Horror. Ah! I want to hear Elmo. No! Mime! Pop star! I wanna hear Elmo moan. That's all. Trey! I'm in a, that I'm was in so good! I, I really think that might be a personal best. Was that seven or six? Let me count. Okay. I don't know, but I hate singing and I hate karaoke, but I really enjoy vocalizing in this game. Trey, that was six. Epic job. Whoa. Wow. Impressed. That All was right. Great. Your turn. What All is right. your zinger today? Okay. My zinger for the day is from Google Reviews. It is a one star review from Na Hyun Woo um, of the Wilson and Harding golf courses here in Los Angeles. And Na says, so busy, give up exercise. (laughs) What? (laughs) Okay, great. I I don't really understand the review now that I'm reading it back. So busy, give up exercise. Is golfing exercising? I always thought golfing was more social than exercise. It's a sport. Okay, well, whatever. All right. Good I job. mean, maybe Nahim it's a Maz. sport. No, it's. A, I guess it's a sport. But like, don't you ride around in a golf cart and stuff? Either way, I'm just distracting because I am nervous. But let's not waste any more time. All right, I here we go. Do this. Yeah. Strap, strap into that whale, honey. Strap it into that whale. All right, here we go. Three, okay. Two, one, go. Musical theater. So busy, give up exercise. Shakespeare. So busy, give up exercise. Pop star. So busy, give up exercise. Adult film. So busy, give up exercise. Disney. So busy, (laughs) give up exercise. Yankee. So busy, give up exercise. Well, that was cutting it close. It was cutting it close. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. And then Yankee was six. So So it's a tie. I mean, really, I I, I almost want to give the win to you because you had like a clean. Six. Let's just let's just take a bow together. Okay, you're right. It's just a game. It's not that it's, serious. It's not that serious, but I almost like, I don't know, got a little bit of a stomach stitch stepping out of that whale, but I'm okay. <laughs> I'm all right. In and, case anyone was concerned. And the alligator was very snappy. <laughs> oh, you with the dad jokes today. I love it. It's great. Okay. Review. Review that review. Okay, we are back from that rousing game break, and it's your turn, Trey. Where is your review from this week? All right. So once again, this is a review that I found a little while ago. Okay. And I've been holding on to it. So this is from 
TripAdvisor. Okay. So it's a one dot review from Dan R. Okay. For the Richard Rogers Theater in New York City. It's a Broadway house, which is currently holding what show, Chelsea? Do you know? Um, no, what show is it, Richard Rogers? It's just a little, you know, little small production called Hamilton. Oh, right. I saw it there. I just didn't remember that, that was Richard Rogers. All right. So this is okay. the review. And is it, am I allowed to ask up front if it's about a specific show or is it about the theater itself? You're going to find out really I'm quick. about to find out. All right. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Let's hear from Dan R. But that's a great question, actually. Okay. Okay. Smallest theater seats, beware. After seeing Hamilton, my email to their customer service. I want to express my extreme displeasure regarding my family's visit to your Richard Rogers Theater last week. We waited caps months to see Hamilton with great anticipation, only to be completely disappointed with the incredibly small seats we had purchased. We sat in the mezzanine, parentheses, R mez, in parentheses, row D, seats 6, 8, 10, and 12. The seats were so small that my knees were pressed firmly against the wooden barrier in front of me. There was no opportunity to shift in any way. It was physically painful. We considered leaving. My mother-in-law, who was 89, had to sit on an angle. My mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, who was 89, had to sit on an angle to fit. And her hip is still bothering her three days after the show. My wife is 5'4" and she could not move her legs either. We feel that this row was added as a retrofit. It, I can't imagine that every seat has the same dimensions. Had these seats been identified as small, we would have never purchased them. We find it so disconcerting that we left the show knowing that the performance was incredible, but the pain of these seats totally distracted us from enjoying the show. Intermission and the end of the show were welcomed relief. I am asking that you consider this email as an opportunity. We'd like to see the show again, and we'd like to have house seats. I think this is fair and hope that you do as well. I look forward to hearing from someone in your organization to resolve this matter. Enter, enter. They responded saying, sorry, you were uncomfortable. That's it, dot, dot, dot. I will never go there again, that's for sure. Wow. <laughs> Dan R. I have to be honest, I, I feel Dan R's pain. I mean, A lot of the seats at Broadway houses are from like the 1910s. So they are very small. That is very common. I, I just, I have to interrupt to point out. Yes. That Dan R purchased tickets in the rear mezzanine and is writing to the Schubert organization requesting house seats, which is fifth row center, which are, literally impossible to receive for Hamilton. This review was written in 2015. We've been shut down because of the pandemic, but you cannot get house seats. And they're certainly not giving you free house seats when you've already seen the show and you bought Rieger mezzanine seats. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can I tell you like a little like secret that I'm announcing on the podcast? Have you done this? No, I saw Hamilton in the house seats. Oh, <gasps> I did. Do I you did. think that um? Do you think that that was a better seat than purchasing a seats in um, rear mez row D seat seat six, eight, ten, and twelve? I think, and I know from personal experience that it was night and day. How seats? They're yeah, they're larger. They're more comfortable. 
you have to know somebody, you know, to get them or be a friend of, you know, someone in the cast or, you know, have connections, which I was connected with somebody in the show. So that's how I was sitting there. But I've spent a lot of time in the rear mezzanine. I'm not always fancy. Uncomfortable in those seats. And I'm a, you know, large, full figured, beautiful woman. And they, you know, they did make them smaller back then. I think it's the food preservatives, but that's a whole nother discussion. Okay. I but, agree. But they, they really should renovate the seats. So I picked this review because I'm really of two minds here. Um, yeah. I feel like the, to the point about the house seats, like house seats are the last tickets to go on sale because they hold them until the performance for anyone in the company. So, so that's how those work. Um, right. And I recognize that like it costs more money to not be in the rear mezzanine. So I'm not trying to make a classes um, like a uh, point here. Um, but I just have a, I personally have a thing that I cannot buy in the rear mezzanine because it's a horrible seat. I mean, you, I you, you just can't see anything. I mean, the amount of times they've seen shows that far back, it, it's like terrible because they're little ants. So there are many crafty ways in which to get better seats. Anyway, we're sort of on a tangent here, but yes, I also agree that the seats in Broadway houses are teeny tiny and it really will ruin your experience when you're in one of these. I remember the Imperial where Les Mis played forever. Like, like literally those seats were so close. Like you yeah. would be, your knees would literally be touching the seats in front of you. Yeah. But, but it sounds to me like Dan is, has made up a, a truth for himself yeah. that this row was retrofit. I know which, that was pretty funny. Which like, I feels a little karen -y to me. But I'm actually going to pull up the Richard Rogers seating chart <laughs> and I'm going to confirm good. that these seats, since they, Dan gave us the actual locations, those have right. been there for previous shows. Oh, good research. Yeah. I mean, I think that that was kind of funny, but in terms of the rear mezzanine thing, it was so expensive to see, see Hamilton at some point, even the cast got really upset and they were like, we need to like put a cap on how much people are reselling these tickets for even through Ticketmaster, It was crazy. The amount of money you would spend on a rear mezzanine seat. So I don't fault Dan R for sitting in the rear mezzanine. I think it was such a popular and it was and is such a popular show that um, when was this written? 2015. Yeah. So like in 2015, this was the hottest ticket in town and to get any seat, you know, like there were, if you had to do, I think my sister did standing room or something. I don't even, you know what I mean? Like there were things that you were doing to see this show. People made a lot of even even if Dan R doesn't normally sit in the rear mez, I feel like you'd sit in the rear mez to see Hamilton. That was just the kind of show that it was. Yeah, so I don't really fault him. I mean, yeah, like it was sort of funny when he was like, you should give me house seats. But I think that the response should have been a little bit more than that. On the one hand, on the other hand, like you and I know this has been a problem for years. There's no way that Dan is the first person to say I was uncomfortable. I've had to contort my body into all kinds of shapes to see a Broadway show. And it is distracting. Mm -hmm. It does take away from the performance and what's happening on stage and your ability to enjoy it when you're like my foot's asleep. I got to like, you know, it's, it's definitely something that has to be addressed and I'll say on the flip side, when I do go to a theater that's been updated, like a Broadway house that has been updated and has new seats, it is like, what a delight. Totally. You know, it is worth the price of admission to have a good place to sit and enjoy live theater. I also really love that Dan R sent an email and then just copy pasted the email as a review on TripAdvisor. I was going to laugh about that. That was the first thing that I wrote down. I was like, my email, like, and I like circled it. And then also I wanted to be reminded, I think you, you said it already, but who did they, who did he send the email to again? Customer service. So I, actually, I don't know if it went to the Schubert's. I'm wondering who customer service is. It might've been telecharge. 
That's what I mean. Like, I wonder who customer service is because you would have to get to, to the Schubert's to make some change here. And I don't know that this email through customer service would have gotten there. So I do feel like Dan R was wanted to make sure that his, his email had more of an audience than just whoever received this on the customer service end of things, because he, he just literally what 90% of that email. I mean, 90% of that, that 90% of that review was an email. All of it. I mean, except for the first sentence and the last sentence. And yeah. I have to make a correction. It's not owned by the Schuberts. It's owned by the Nederlander. Mm, the other royalty. Yeah. Of Broadway. Well, Ju Jamson. Um, I feel like Ju Jamson. Well, there. Who cares? We're in the there's weeds. a handful of them. <laughs> anyway, point is, I agree with Dan R. I know that he's being truthful. I understand how upset he is. I would be upset too if I waited two months to see a show and I was really excited about it and I couldn't enjoy the show because I was super uncomfortable. I want to validate that experience. I also want to validate the fact that Dan R. wrote this review for the Richard Rogers Theater and not Hamilton. You know, I think I think he would have enjoyed the show more. I think he wanted to enjoy the show more. I think he's a patron of the arts and he really wanted to enjoy this production of Hamilton and and the seating at the theater really impeded his ability to enjoy and you know enjoy in this this wonderful historical theater experience and I think that this is an experience that it can be expected I mean if you're going to go to this theater expect to be cramped I was going to say that as well like I do think it's actually very valuable I kind of went in hard about the rear mezzanine, which is sort of a tangent, but I remember I saw the Romeo and Juliet, the Romeo and Juliet with Orlando <laughs> Bloom and Condola Rashad. And I was in the last row of the orchestra and I couldn't see the balcony scene because the mezzanine like overhangs row L and I was like in row <laughs> KK or something. I couldn't see the balcony scene of Romeo and Juliet because I, couldn't see because the balcony was so low. Yeah. I mean, I've, so I've the theater purchased, has problems. yeah, I've purchased what they deem partial view seats. I saw Sweeney Todd behind a column, like <laughs> anything, anything that happened to the left or the right of the column, I could see any, any action that happened right smack there aligned with the column. I just missed, I just missed that part. I wonder if um, Broadway will take this opportunity to listen to Dan R since it's been shut down and do a little revamp of the seats. I hope so. I mean, I, I do feel bad, like in the context of the world right now and knowing how much Broadway is suffering and so many people that, you know, depended on the livelihood of Broadway are, are not able to work. And I can't imagine that it's going to be in the budget for a while to make some of these renovations. But I do think it would behoove them to listen to the Dan R's of the world. I just don't see it happening because it's all about money. And like, you got to sell seats. Like the tighter the seats are, the more you fit and the more money you make. But I will say that Danar has beautiful hand, like uh, punctuation, beautiful spelling, definitely like crafted this to perfection. I was going to say Danar was giving me professor vibes. Mm -hmm. Disconcerting is such a good word. Yeah. Professor Danar. And we like we both agree this is very a common experience. We both have experiences like yeah. this. And I mean, I don't I don't find this to be humorous as much as I wanted it to be. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no, no um, disrespect for to your wonderful performance, which is always solid and, and great. Just don't you think that the lack of humor had anything to do with you? It didn't. I just think it's not that funny of an issue. Like it's it's absolutely Correct. accurate and it's true. I wasn't laughing I wasn't entertained I wouldn't read it around a campfire like I said but I think it's truthful are we it, ready to crown this you think I think I'm ready I also just want to say that I love that they took their 89 year old mother-in-law to see Hamilton oh I know that it sounds like it was a whole family affair which is another reason why you got to buy the rear mez because seats are expensive yeah it is especially that show all right. So let's, what a good son. 
husband. Let's, yes. All right, let's crown it. Let's do it. The queens are tabulating. I'm a little um conflicted, but all right, are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Total school. Yeah. We did it again. It's a it's a four crown kind of show. It it's it a- is. It's interesting because I feel like similarly, Dan R and Ashley B were just reporting how they were negatively impacted from being a purchasing customer, which like is like a real, it's a real issue. And uh, I, I just, I do think it's kind of funny to, but hey, squeaky wheel gets a grease and you never get what you don't ask for. So if you want to, if Dan R wants to request that he is given house seats, then go for it, you know, manifest it, baby. I agree. I manifested those house seats. I'm going to be honest. I did. Um, I, I felt similarly. I think that Dan R was honest again, felt like a real human to me, really felt for him with the whole family vibes and just the anticipation for two months of a wonderful event, similar to Ashley, you know, the anticipation of this faux squatty potty. Um, he really was anticipating seeing Hamilton. And I think that he was being truthful in his assessment of the theater and what anyone can come to expect. So Dan R, four crowns well-deserved. I'm in agreement. All right, Chelsea, should we jump into the most regal portion of our show? Who are you inducting for... My Royal Highness. Okay. Well, I um, stayed at the Capri Hotel in Ojai. Wait, that sounds so chic. I know. It's not the like chicest, but it has the best energy. Like it's not, it's not the fanciest, but I love the Capri and mostly um, someone that works there. I believe he's the general manager or his name is Jeff. And he was just lovely. In addition to serving me just like realness and compassion and just like not throwing a rule book in our faces about when we could use a hot tub, he really added value to my life. I think he should have a TED talk, but he doesn't want to because he prefers one-on-one interactions. And I just think that that's beautiful. And Jeff, thank you. And I almost like don't want to tell people in a way how great the Capri Hotel is because it's like my oasis and I don't want everybody to take it from me. But as a review queen, I feel compelled to let you know that you should go to the Capri Hotel. It's so great. And say hi to Jeff for me. And everyone that works there is so welcoming. When you go there, they actually like make it seem like they were waiting for you in a way that feels authentic. They're like, Chelsea, thanks for being here. Or like, oh, so good to see you. Um, and so they're great. So Jeff from the Capri Hotel in Ojai, you are my Royal Highness. Wow. Congratulations, Jeff. That's a Congratulations. Huge, huge honor. Yes. Trey, how about you? Who's your Royal Highness? Okay. So I'm trying something new for today. I, I, I found in my Royal Highness inductee that I don't actually know, but I okay. found this story online. There is a woman who turned 90 years old and her uh, granddaughter wanted to throw her a huge birthday celebration because she really missed her grandmother after being apart for so long and mm-hmm. was really inspired by all of these baby photos Uh, like first birthdays where the kids are wearing like tutus and crowns celebrating their first year. And so the granddaughter, Stephanie thought, well, why can't I just do that for my 90 year old grandmother? Chelsea, she literally threw a princess themed party. (laughs) This 90 year old woman is wearing a t-shirt that says it took 90 years to look this good. She is in a huge, roughly tool, pink, puffy, tutu and she has a little cockeyed like 90 crown that's like glittery Uh, and um, totally queening vibes um and so that really touched my heart so i am inducting both stephanie and her g-ma 
Aww. as my inductees. I'm inducting them. Did I say that? I'm yes. induct. Okay, so I'm inducting Stephanie and her Gma for my Royal Highness. Oh. That's so special. I love this part of the show. Does it just like make you smile? Like she's 90 yeah. and she's wearing a tutu. Yeah. Uh, we've got to put her, we're going to put her on the Instagram or something so that everybody that's listening can yeah. experience Gma and all of her 90 year glory. All right. Should we jump into, um, why don't you say this one? I feel like I've said all of the intros. Sorry. Yeah, sure. So every so often. Yeah. It's um, the, shall we keep the regality flow? Okay, sure. Okay. I love it so much. Shall we keep the regality flowing and read a royal review? <gasps> yes, I love this part. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Well, every so often, we like to feature one of our very own reviews from listeners like you. That's right. But a review from one of our listeners is not any ordinary review, Hanny. It's what we call a royal review. Baby, it's time for some royal reviews. <laughs> okay, well, this royal review is from JLH listener 108, who I have a feeling I know who this is. Um, she gave us five crowns and she, I, I mean, I'm giving it away cause I'm saying she, but, um, they said a little nervous. My review may end up on the show, but it's a worthy risk to take to give Trey and Chelsea five crowns. These two crack me up and I can't wait to hear many more reviews reviewed. Great concepts, great hosts. Aww. Isn't that so nice? Wow. Thank you, JLH listener 108. Uh, that's Jenny Hoof. I gotta be, I gotta be real and call out my girl. Thank you, Jenny Hoof. My call my freshman and sophomore year college roommate. Whoa. Who is the most supportive person ever and a phenomenal Pilates instructor. And um watch that rock. Pilates, I love you. And thank you so much for your sweet, sweet review hoof. I guarantee or you. JLH listener 108. I guarantee you, if you want to be uh, read on Royal Reviews, write a sentence that says, I'm nervous that this is going to end up on the show. Because, honey, I saw that and I was like, well, it has to happen. I know. I thought the same exact thing. So funny. Speaking right, of. Well, speaking you, of. Yes. Speaking of, if you want to be featured in one of our royal reviews, then make sure you leave us a review right now. And if you hate the pod, you can hate review us with five stars. That'll really get our little goats. Ugh, so true. We've made it super easy with a super cute link, lovethepodcast.com slash the review queens. And there's also a one-click link in the show description below. It's easy peasy beautiful review Ugh. queens. So easy. I can't wait to experience it myself. <laughs> we did it. That's we another did. round in the books, Chels. Ah, oh, it's true. It's crazy. It feels like it's just flying by. I hope it feels the same way for you guys. Thank you guys for joining us today. If you like what you heard, please tell a friend. If you didn't like what you heard, tell an enemy. If you want to lodge your own complaint, submit your own review, or share with the world who you would induct for My Royal Highness, leave us a voicemail. Our voicemail box number is 1-850-REVIEW-0. That's true. That's 1-850-REVIEW-0. I just feel like we're an infomercial and I love it. You can also follow us on all the socials at The Review Queens and I'm at Chelsea BD. And I'm at Trey Gerald with two R's. Become a member of the Royal Court by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash review that review. You can also watch live clips from our recording sessions on YouTube and you can see my uh, 240 LED lights that are not illuminated. <laughs> And remember, ignore the haters. You're a queen. Gender non-specific queen. Always. Bye. 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 <laughs> 
Review that review. Review That Review is an independent podcast. Certain names have been redacted or changed to protect the guilty. Executive produced by Trey Gerald and Chelsea Don with editing and sound design by me with Voice of Her Talents by Eva Kamensky. Our cover art was designed by Logo Vora and our theme song was written by Joe Kanozian and sung by Natalie Weiss. <laughs> Thanks for watching, queens. Click here to subscribe and click here for more videos.